<sighs> Greetings, everyone. Uh, I am freaking exhausted. It was a long week at work. Uh, this is being filmed on Friday night. I'm picking up Rosie in the morning, so I just thought I'd bang off another update or two before I uh, collapse into a heap of gelatin in bed. Um, yes, well, as you may notice, still wearing the Dracula shirt, so that means more horror Blu-ray updates. Did I? Yeah, I moved those. I put them on the shelf. I couldn't remember. This is how much my brain is mush right now. <laughs> yes, the brain is mush. Let's do some updates. So, um, last time we did the vampire stuff. Today we got more sort of just general all-around piles of other horror stuff that I've picked up over the past few months. So, let's take a look. Horror Blu-rays today on the Multimedia Chronicles. Welcome back. Okay, well, let us continue in no particular order. I'm just going to go in the order that I have them in the random stack here. All right, first up, I picked this one up because, well, there, there seems to be a bit of a trend right now with, uh, uh, you know, sort of revisitings to old fairy tales and reinterpretations of old fairy tales. I mean, we had, uh, well, there's actually a couple that I got from uh, Mill Creek a little while back. For example, I, I don't think I've shown them in an update, so we'll throw them in here, even though they're not horror movies. We've got stuff like The Tenth Kingdom, which features, like, every major fairy tale character in existence, and The Tenth Kingdom being New York. Really cool TV miniseries, actually. really liked that one a lot. And then uh, a few years back, we had Tin Man, which uh, Mill Creek recently re-released on Blu-ray, which is basically kind of a cyberpunk reinterpretation of The Wizard of Oz. Instead of it being Oz, they call it the OZ, the Outer Zone, or something like that. And anyway, uh, really cool uh, miniseries. But uh, in addition to that, there's been some that have been kind of a little darker, a little more horror-oriented. Actually, Tin Man kind of has some horror elements to it as well, but it's more sci-fi. But anyway, uh, one of the ones that kind of caught my eye, I don't know, you may or may not uh, agree. Mainly, I picked it up because it was $5 at the... Uh, Black Friday sale at Walmart, and it came with a really cool lenticular slipcover. We got Red Riding Hood, the alternate cut. Can you see the... There you go. It kind of shifts. Cool. So this is from the director of the first Twilight movie, Catherine Hardwick. Yeah, you know I'm not a big Twilight fan. Well, not at all. <laughs> But, uh, I don't know, it's, it seemed kind of, it was $5, okay? It seemed kind of, it was $5, that's what it seemed kind of. And it had a cool uh, lenticular slipcover. Plus, I've been kind of enjoying some of the revisitings of these old fairy tales and, uh, and you know, the new interpretations of them. There's quite a few of them out there now. I mean, there was, um, there was that Hansel and Gretel one, which I didn't get, but, you know, there was that one, and... Uh, there's been, uh, I don't know, there's been a, they got Maleficent coming out with Angelina Jolie as the, the evil queen Maleficent. So, uh, yeah, really, really looking forward to that one, actually, because you know how I love Angelina Jolie. Anyway, I just thought this looked like a cool kind of darker interpretation of Red Riding Hood. Wanted to check it out. So this particular edition, uh, in addition to the cool lenticular slipcover, in terms of extras, we've got uh, the theatrical version plus the alternate cut, which includes a provocative alternate ending. Mm, provocative. It will provoke you. Uh, Secrets Behind the Red Cloak, picture-in-picture -picture commentary with Amanda Seyfried, Shiloh Fernandez, Max Irons, and director Catherine Hardwick. Gag Reel, Red Riding Hood, Red's Men, the guys share their casting stories, and we get a sneak peek at exclusive clips from their audition tapes. Uh, two music videos, and much more. Oh, plus additional scenes. I don't know why they put that way down at the bottom. But anyway, uh, yeah, so Red Riding Hood. Haven't checked it out yet, but, you know, we'll see it. And if Five bucks is kind of my threshold for buying things that I'm kind of iffy about. Uh, to me, I mean, it's like the same price as renting a movie. Like, if you were to get video on demand, maybe on Netflix, obviously, but regular video on demand is like five bucks to rent a movie. 
And, uh, yeah, if you like it, great. If not, you're only out five bucks and you got to see a movie. So there you go. Next up, next up. Now, this one I heard a lot of good things about, and I've actually been wanting to check it out for a while. Uh, I forget where I found this. I think it was on the $8 rack, that $8 Blu-ray rack sale that Walmart was having. I think I told you about it a couple videos ago. Yeah, anyway, this was one of them, and I thought, oh, cool. And then I just found out they did a sequel. Um, I know nothing about the sequel. I don't really know much about this one either. I've kind of been avoiding spoilers because it, uh, it, it sounded like, uh, you know, one where you kind of want the surprises intact. We have a spooky little kid horror movie, Insidious. Yeah, kind of like, I don't know. It's supposed to be really spooky and creepy and, you know, little kids can be scary. Little kids love to play monsters. You know, they really do. They just love to dress up and... Uh, like, Rosie's no exception to that. She, when we broke out the Halloween stuff, she, she like, went through every single mask and piece of costume and just combined everything in every conceivable way. And just, you know, was every monster she could possibly be with the stuff that's in my Halloween box. <laughs> But uh, special features have got Horror 101, the exclusive seminar, on set with Insidious and Insidious Entities. And that's pretty much it. It's kind of, uh, kind of uh, you know, light on extras. But anyway, I've heard that this is a really good, uh, really creepy, really scary horror movie. So uh, definitely looking forward to checking that out. Now, next up, this is a reacquisition. I was hoping to have picked up some of the others in the series by this point, but I just haven't got around to it yet. Uh, I found out this is one that I sold a while back, and then I found out it has recently gone out of print. Just happened to be in one of the local pawn shops and saw it for 12 bucks. We have the 50th anniversary edition of Psycho. Yes, absolutely wanted to get this one back in the collection because not only is it a beautiful transfer and loads and loads and loads of extras, I've done videos about it before, but uh, this is just a fantastic movie. I love this movie so much. It's great. Um, I'll put a link in the description to my... Uh, original video that I did about that one. Uh, it was quite a while ago. It was actually at my previous place. So, uh, so next up, we've got a sequel. Uh, I talked about the... Actually, I talked about the original uh, movie that was done based on this uh, particular video game franchise back before I even started the Multimedia Chronicles. It was actually just in an episode of one of my video blogs. In fact, I'll find the link to that as well, and I'll put it in the description too. So check the description when you're all done here. I'll put all kinds of cool stuff down there for you guys. Um, but I'd heard pretty good things about the sequel. Uh, like, I really liked the first one. Uh, I know a lot of people didn't, but I really enjoyed it. I thought it was an effective horror film and had some... Uh, some really cool... Sorry, I see a pop-up window over on my computer there. What? What? What do you want? What? It's a pop-up window about Lightscribe. Why is there a pop-up window on, about Lightscribe on that computer? I don't have a Lightscribe drive on that computer. It's on the other computer. Anyway, whatever. Just fuck off, Lightscribe. Go away. Anyway, um, Silent Hill Revelation 3D, of course. Uh, I picked up the 3D version because this was kind of when I started thinking like, hmm, I should probably start getting the 3D versions since I'm planning to get a 3D TV. So I'll have lots of 3D stuff to watch on it. Um, the 3D version was actually cheaper than the 2D version. <laughs> I don't know why. It was cheaper by like $3 at Walmart. I think the, two, the 2D version was like 20, $22 and this one was 19 So... I was like, okay, the 3D version's cheaper, and it's got all the same stuff plus the 3D version, so why not? Um, yeah, so I really liked the first Silent Hill film. Um, I played some of the games. I haven't played anywhere near all the games. I played the first one. Was I got completely stuck at one point, wasn't able to finish it. Played the second one all the way through to completion a couple of times. Really enjoyed that one a lot. Um, played demos for the third and fourth one, and I think that's it. Yeah, I really got to play more Silent Hill. There's some really good stuff in that series. Uh, and I've got the soundtracks as well, some of the soundtracks. And uh, I just love the creepy atmospheric music in these. But anyway, I uh, really enjoyed Silent Hill Revelation. I watched this, uh, I don't know, about a month ago, I guess. It does have uh, Sean Bean in it again. It is technically a sequel to the first one, even though there are quite a number of continuity errors between it. But there are some pretty effective, creepy moments in here. In particular, uh, 
the scene with the 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 you know I don't know what you could the nurses I, I don't know what they're if they have an actual name but anyway the creepy nurses uh, have a pretty memorable and effective scene in this oh plus it has Jon Snow from Game of Thrones in it did I mention that yeah Jon Snow from Game of Thrones without his lovely British accent yeah he's playing an American character but it's Jon Snow you know Lo gotta love Jon Snow. But anyway, I, I thought this was okay. Uh, it had some pretty effective moments. Some people said they liked it better than the first one. Um, yeah, I, I put it... Uh, I don't know. It's hard for me to say. I actually wanted to pick up the first one the same time I picked this one up, but I couldn't find it anywhere. So I just got this one. Um, but I, I don't know. I'd put it about on par with the first one. But they're very different tone. Like, this one wasn't... I don't know if I'd say this one isn't quite as dark as the first one. The first one had some pretty, I don't know, went to some dark places with its story. Uh, this one goes to some somewhat dark places, but not as much so as the first one. In terms of the imagery, though, the imagery and the visuals and the creatures and everything, just fantastic in this. They really, they really, I think, successfully brought the world of Silent Hill to life visually, even if they, uh, you know, changed the story quite a bit from the from the games. So next up, uh, speaking of the bargain racks, check this out. This is one that, uh, you know, I, it, another one of those good old remakes that uh, for, for someone who hates remakes so much, I sure seem to be buying a lot of them lately, don't I? Yeah, there, there's actually more. There's more remakes coming up in future updates, but we'll get to those when we get to those. Now, this is one that, honestly, I was kind of ticked off that they made. Um, although I did like their casting choice for the lead character, I figured, well, if they're going to remake it, that's a pretty good casting choice for the lead character. But, um, yeah, I was kind of ticked off that they made, that they were doing this, especially when I saw the trailer and I saw it was just kind of a mishmash of the original movies. Uh, we have the Nightmare on Elm Street remake. Yeah. Now, the reason I was particularly annoyed when I heard they were making this was because uh, I grew up watching the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. This was my horror franchise growing up. I know a lot of people like Friday the 13th or Halloween. I, I never really saw the Friday the 13th movies that much. They didn't really appeal to me. They just seemed kind of, you know, typical slasher movie type stuff. Um, I know they got creative deaths and whatnot, but it just it wasn't enough to hold my interest. I liked Nightmare on Elm Street because I've always been fascinated by dreams and nightmares and things like that. And uh, and to me, it, it, it went more into the realm of almost horror fantasy, like where the, the, the dream environments and nightmare sequences and stuff could be very imaginative and very creative and, um, and often quite terrifying. And then, of course, Robert Englund as the, you know, the title character was just fantastic. I mean, he really made that character his own and uh and was just a joy to watch um now i i'll talk more about the original nightmare on Elm street movies whenever i get around to picking up the collection of them i think i've talked about them a little bit in the past when i've uh was going over my laserdisc collections so i still have a couple of the old, the old laser discs but anyway so they had of course jackie earl haley as as freddie for this one which i thought was an excellent casting choice um but i was really wary about checking out the remake because you know I hold the original series in such high regard and it's so you know significant to me personally for nostalgic reasons and such I mean it was the first real true modern horror movie I saw as a kid and it just scared the living shit out of me so when I saw the trailer for this and I saw it it almost seemed like they'd taken a mishmash of lines and moments from the previous seven movies and just kind of slapped them all together into this hodgepodge remake uh, I wasn't really looking forward to seeing it, but I decided to give it the benefit of the doubt, and I checked it out, and, you know, honestly, it, it, it was okay. It wasn't as horrible as I thought, but, uh, you know, and the, the whole thing in the trailer, which was misleading, I thought, was that they made it seem like Freddy had been wrongly accused and whatnot. Well, it's pretty clear from the actual movie that no, he was not wrongly accused. He was he was just lying to save his own skin. But okay, so I got this around Halloween. You can tell from the cover. This is part of the Halloween, very brief Halloween uh, thing that um, I guess it was New Line or Warner. I think it was Warner Brothers did to uh, promote a bunch of their DVDs for Halloween. So it was in shrink wrap, and then this was just in the shrink wrap. This is not a slip cover though. 
it's actually just a piece of cardboard that was inserted into the shrink wrap. So imagine my surprise when I take the shrink wrap off and I didn't even notice it had the slip cover, but it, it actually, it has the slip cover and it's the cool slip cover. It's the lenticular one where you see the Freddy slashes and stuff, which is actually kind of cool. <laughs> so that was a nice surprise for five bucks, not only to get, you know, not have to pay too much for the remake, but, you know, obviously wanting it for the Nightmare on Elm Street collection because I'm an obsessive completist that way. Um, but uh, also to get it with the slipcover, which is actually kind of hard to find now. So bit of bit of luck there. So I didn't pay too much for it, and I got the slipcover, so I'm pretty happy about that. So in terms of extras here, we've got Maniacal Movie Mode, which is basically one of those focus points things, which I believe you can watch the focus points on its own, on their own or incorporated into the movie. Uh, so you got this unflinching experience delves into the blood-curdling elements of Freddy Krueger's murderous rampages. Dare to peek through your fingers. Cutting, alternate opening, alternate ending, and additional scene. I don't know if I've actually watched those. I'll have to check those out. Uh, plus, Freddy Krueger Reborn. Find out how the filmmakers dreamt up this new terrifying take on horror's scariest franchise and follow the reinvention of Freddy Krueger. And that's it. All right. Well, there you go. Um, yeah, so overall, I would not say it's anywhere near as scary. I think they made a little too much, you know, typical modern horror movie. Um, there were a few nice little nods to the originals. It wasn't as much of a hodgepodge as I was expecting it to be from the trailer. Uh, and some of the moments from the trailer aren't actually in the movie, which is, which is odd, but you know, that, that happens sometimes. But, um, you know, it, it was an entertaining enough little time waster, but honestly, I'm, I'm going to stick with the originals. You know, I'll still pop this in occasionally just when I want some noise in the background, but, uh, you know, uh, I, I'll, I'll always have the originals first. But, uh, but yeah, I, was, I thought it was cool to get the slipcover anyway, and this cool little uh, insert, which, you know, I can just sort of keep as a collector's card, I guess. And then the same sale, I thought, well, okay, if I'm going to, you know, if I'm going to get the Freddy remake, i got to get something good, too, uh, just in case. I wasn't expecting much out of the Freddy remake. But, uh, so I thought, well, i got to get something good. So I took a look. It's like, well, what other $5 movies do they have for the, uh, for the Halloween sale? And I saw this one, and I know I've seen this movie before, but honestly, I don't remember a damn thing about it. I'm really going to have to sit down and watch it again soon. Um, all I remember is it has Herman Munster in it, and who doesn't love Herman Munster? I'm, of course, talking about Stephen King's Pet Cemetery. Ow! What am I doing with my fingers? All right, there we go. That's better. <laughs> Stephen King's Pet Cemetery, which I know a lot of you guys are huge fans of. I get a lot of you asking me about this one all the time. Sometimes dead is better. Yeah. So anyway, of course, has uh, Fred Gwynn in it, who was Herman Munster back in the original Munsters show. And again, one of these cool Halloween cover card things. So I'm glad it wasn't like, I don't know, some of those ones where they do custom slip covers for this specific line that they're looking to do and they're often really tacky. No, it's just a card. It's just a card that they put on the cover and then you got the regular cover underneath. So, you know, a couple of cool little collector's cards there. Um, so anyway, we got uh, Pet Cemetery. I really can't say much about it because I haven't seen it in a bazillion years, probably not since it was new. But uh, definitely looking forward to checking it out again. And uh, it, it's essentially going to be new to me all over again because I honestly don't remember a damn thing about it. Uh, so special features. We've got commentary by director Mary Lambert, Stephen King Territory, the characters, and filming the horror. So not a bad little package of supplements there. Nothing spectacular. Nothing fancy, but it works. So there you go. Pet Cemetery. I don't have a ton, ton of Stephen King movies in my collection. I've got a handful of them, but... Uh, but, you know, if you're only going to get a few, I know that that's one of the ones to get. Alrighty, and last but certainly not least, we have a pair of films from uh, Shout Factory's fairly recent new uh, sister brand, Scream Factory. Now, Scream Factory has been doing some amazing things with their Blu-ray and DVD releases, putting out some really obscure stuff, a lot of which has been out of print for ages, uh, some of which has never seen a uh, DVD or Blu-ray release. Uh, these two have been released a few times over the years, but uh, this is the first, I think, proper Blu-ray releases they've got. Certainly the first for one of them. Now, as you know, I recently picked up Halloween and Hall uh, the 35th anniversary edition of Halloween and then the 30th anniversary edition of Halloween 2, 
Well, I had to keep going, so I got the Scream Factory edition of Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. Yeah, Scream Factory has been doing some fantastic stuff. I, I do not hesitate to say they are fast becoming the criterion of horror. That's how good their Blu-ray releases have been. The picture quality, they, they've been doing some fantastic work on the transfers. They just look and sound gorgeous every single time. I don't think they've had a single bad release in terms of the audio and video quality. Um, I mean, they get the best available elements and they do the best transfers they can. Just really nice, done properly. No DNR bullshit. Uh, these guys have been putting a lot of effort into these. And not only that, but much like how Aero Video in the UK does, they have... Um, so they got the slip cover, which is quite nice. The slip covers are gorgeous on these. But much like how Aero Video in the UK has additional uh, covers, well, so does Scream Factory. Pretty cool. They don't have four covers like Aero does. They have two. But So you get... Uh, a cover with brand new painted artwork and then an alternate cover which has the original poster art uh, very nicely put onto the cover and then different pictures on the back too which is pretty cool so I like that I like that a lot so uh, nice reversible covers and uh, I'm gonna get this back in here there we go and just uh, all kinds of, of extras on here let me just give you a rundown of the extras now Halloween 3 I know was was one of the uh, least liked of the Halloween films for a very long time I think it's become more appreciated in recent years uh, essentially because people have come to realize that maybe they misjudged it because uh, like a lot of people didn't like it simply because it didn't have Michael Myers in it and it wasn't a continuation of the Michael Myers story um, but I think a lot of people have done what, what myself and a lot of my friends did at the time and just kind of taken it as its own thing. And as its own thing, it's actually a pretty damn good little horror movie. You know, it's got some very effective moments and it's a lot of fun. And, and it's got fucking uh, Tom Atkins in it. Thrill me. It's Tom Atkins as the star of this one. I mean, come on. You can't go wrong with some Tom Atkins action, man. So special features. Take a deep breath. Here we go. Audio commentary with writer-director Tommy Lee Wallace. Another audio commentary with actor Tom Atkins. Stand Alone, the, man, man, the, 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 the making of Halloween 3, Season of the Witch, featuring interviews with writer-director Tommy Lee Wallace, actors Tom Atkins, Stacey Nelkin, Brad Schachter, stunt coordinator Dick Warlock, executive producer Erwin Yablins, director of photography Dean Cundy, co-composer Alan Howarth, and more. Horrors, Hallowed Grounds, the locations of Halloween 3, host Sean and... Sean Clark and director, writer-director Tommy Lee Wallace revisit the original shooting locations of the film, teaser trailer, theatrical trailer, TV spots, and still gallery. That is quite a loaded package for a movie that a lot of people have been shitting on for the past 20 years. And you even get this cool... Uh, ah, crap. Can we get in there? Get this cool... Um, God damn it. Sorry, the slip cover is a little bit tight there we go uh you get this cool st uh, sticker it's the 30th anniversary silver shamrock edition now if you've seen the movie you know the significance of that if you don't know the significance of that see the movie and then you will but uh yeah i mean because originally the halloween series was intended to be an anthology series it wasn't intended to be just the story of michael myers uh but the first one was so popular and then there was studio pressure to do a sequel uh, so they did the second one, which was a direct continuation of, of the first one. And they think, okay, good. We've done that. We did the, did the second Michael Myers and appeased the studio. Now let's get back to what we originally wanted to do with the Halloween movies and do, like, it was going to be a different one every time. It was going to be an anthology series. Everything was going to be different. So they did the third one, saying, like, hey, look at, see, now it's, it's new stuff. And everybody hated it. It's like, well, where's Michael Myers? <sighs> do, do you not see what we're trying to do here? Yeah, fine, we'll do 50 more Michael Myers movies. You're fucking happy now? Jesus Christ! But, uh, <clears throat> anyway. Um, so Halloween 3 definitely kind of stands on its own. I've always really liked it. Like, when I had them on VHS, uh, I think I, I rewatched that one as much as I rewatched the other two. I just, I really enjoyed it as a sort of sci-fi horror thing. It's about killer robots and shit. But, uh, yeah, it's good. So anyway, continuing on with the uh, John Carpenter, last but not least, 
This is one I honestly don't think I've ever actually seen all the way through. I've only seen bits and pieces of it over the years. So I thought it was, I've been meaning to pick it up for ages on various formats, and, you know, Laserdisc. Actually, I remember the Laserdisc edition when it came out, it had a running commentary, and in, I think it was, um, what the hell was it, HMV? It was like a giant HMV in, uh, in Toronto. They had it playing, they had the Laserdisc playing with the commentary, and I was watching a bit, and I was like, that's so cool. They're like it's like the makers of the movie talking about the movie. That's awesome. And it was one of the things that sold me on Laserdisc. But funny enough, I never actually picked up that particular Laserdisc, even though I really wanted to check out that commentary. But I checked out plenty of other good commentaries. And of course, talking about one of John Carpenter's other early classics, The Fog. Yes, The Fog. Uh, you know, pirate ghosts. How can you go wrong? So, yeah, I've really been wanting to check this one out because I'm pretty sure I've never seen it all the way through. And, uh, and again, if I have, it was so long ago, I don't remember. But, uh, again, we got, um, what's his face? We got, uh, uh, Tom Atkins in here again. And we got Hal Holbrook and Janet Leigh, speaking of Psycho. And, uh, and, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis, speaking of Halloween. Got Adrian Barbeau, speaking of Swamp Thing. Well, actually, we weren't speaking of Swamp Thing. But Adrian Barbeau's awesome, and she was in Swamp Thing. So anyway, The Fog. Jeez, I didn't actually realize it had that ma that awesome of a cast. I might watch this as my next movie. I've been watching kind of a movie at night lately, and uh, might watch this one next. So uh, again, very nice slipcover. Very nice. And then uh, again, we have reversible artwork. Let's just uh, slide this out here. So we got the uh, beautiful new painted artwork there, and then on the back, we've got the original poster art with uh, some different pictures on the back cover. Pretty cool. Pretty cool, man. All right, so uh, in terms of extras, let's take a peek here. Do-do-do. I was originally going to do just uh, the Silent Hill and and these ones in one of the Halloween updates, but I never got around to it. I was going to call it Silently Screaming. Get it? Silent Hill, Scream Factory. <laughs> All right. So um, the fog, we got a new 1080p high-definition transfer supervised by cinematographer Dean Cundy. Audio commentary with writer-director John Carpenter and writer-producer Deborah Hill. New audio comment. That's probably... Actually, I think that's the one from the Laserdisc. Sweet! I finally have that commentary. That's awesome. Uh, new audio commentary with actors Adrian Barbeau, Tom Atkins, and production designer Tommy Lee Wallace. New interview with Jamie Lee Curtis. Tales from the Mist, Inside the Fog featurette. Fear on Film, Inside the Fog featurette. The Fog, story... story I just can't talk. Storyboard to Film featurette. Horrors Hallowed Grounds, a new look at the film's locations. Outtakes, theatrical trailers, TV spots, and photo gallery. Pretty sweet. Um, I'm steadily impressed by these uh, Scream Factory releases, and one of my focuses this year, in addition to the plethora of other things I'm trying to get going with the collection, is I want to get more of the Scream Factory releases, especially since originally they were going to have the uh, the very lovely slip covers available for the full run, the the full print run of the uh, titles and including reprints, but uh, it apparently proved to be too cost prohibitive to do so. So as everyone feared would happen eventually, the slip covers now will only be available for the first run, and then they will be gone. Forever. So the slipcovers are collector's items. Remember that. If you see a sh Scream Factory title that you really want and it has the slipcover, grab it. Because if you don't, chances are next time you see it, it'll be gone. So needless to say, I'm going to be hunting down some Scream Factory titles over the next little while just to kind of get get caught up a little bit on the, uh, uh, the backlog of them that I don't have yet and then carry on from there. Wow, almost half an hour to talk about eight Blu-rays. Can I ramble or what? Alrighty, well, that is it for me to you for now. So that is it for the horror Blu-ray updates. Pretty good uh, pretty good selection there, I think. Some some pretty quality viewing and, uh, well, at least six of them. <laughs> Alrighty, that is it for me to you for now. So until next time, thanks for watching. Plenty more for the holiday updates to come. I've got at least 
three more stacks to go through, possibly four. It might be nine parts instead of eight. Maybe it'll be ten. I don't know. Actually, I get paid on Wednesday, so I might have even more stuff to talk about. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. It's going to be at least nine parts, though. It was going to be eight. It's going to be nine. All right. See you next time. Till then, thanks for watching, and sayonara.